Hello, I'm joined today by Dan Scoville, who'll be discussing Micron. Dan, let's start by talking about DRAM. Isn't that the most commoditized of all hardware products? Absolutely. Um, this is, you know, DRAMs have been the ugly stepchild of the semiconductor business for decades. Um, well, what's happened in the last 10 or 15 years, there's, we've gone from 15 to 20 suppliers of DRAM chips. We are now down to three. That's it. You've got Samsung, you've got Hynix, and you've got Micron. Uh, and uh, there is no more Japanese player. Micron just bought Elpida, which was the consolidation of the last of the, D of the Japanese DRAM makers. So we now have only three suppliers. Uh, in addition, on the market side, um, because we're sort of out of the PC era and sort of into the cell phone era, the, the DRAMs have fragmented on the market side. It used to be most of them went into PCs. Well, a PC DRAM is a little different than a low-power DRAM required for a smartphone, which is a little different, again, from the high-performance DRAM that goes into the workstations and the servers. So we've had the market has fragmented. The suppliers have consolidated. Granted, growth in units in DRAMs has come down. is not very exciting, but that supply-demand balance has basically made for a profitable product. Now, uh, Micron as a stock, it was up 200% last year. It's up 50% this year. I think it's still got some more room to go. And people are skittish right now. They're afraid of it because DRAMs. They have an awful, awful uh, history, and people are scared of that. But again, because of the nature of these, these macro changes in that environment, I still think there's opportunity for these guys to, to grow the business and grow profitability. And does Micron have an opportunity in other kinds of memory technology? Um, actually, yes, it does. Um, it has uh, actually three sorts of memory technologies, but I think there's two main ones that where it has an opportunity. Uh, one is in NAND flash. Uh, NAND flash is a solid state, uh, non-volatile memory. Um, what happens is they are a lesser player in that business. Uh, it's only about 30% of their revenues, and it's even less on the profitability side for Micron. Uh, although they're focusing on the cream of the market there, there's a, something called SSDs or solid state drives. Basically, these are uh, NAND flash memories that sort of replace a disk drive. Um, it, they're faster, they're smaller, uh, they work work better. Um, but they're going to skim the cream of that market and just focus on that part of it. And I think over time, we'll see that emerge and they will be a more significant player. But that is a lesser part of their business and they are a lesser part of that ecosystem, as opposed to the DRAMs where they're a much bigger player and it's a bigger part of their revenue. Um, they also build something called NORFLASH. That's a very small percentage of their sales. But the combination of DRAM, NAND flash, and NORFLASH, it turns out smartphones and all kinds of other systems need all three kinds of those memories. So the trick is, how do you combine them all together? Well, the technologies are quite different, so you really can't put them on the same chip. So there's been some very creative packaging technologies. Basically, you get really, really small packages and you stack them on top of each other like a sandwich. Um, they have something called the hybrid memory cube where that's exactly what they do and that way they can stack three memories and maybe even a logic chip on top of it and it can still fit in that cell phone of yours that's about you know yay thick. Um, that's very tricky to do, um, and that's a technology that they have. So I think the short answer is yes, they've got NAND flash, that's an opportunity, um, and they've got this hybrid memory cube technology that's, that's also doing well for them. And as Moore's law runs out of room for people to improve, um, will we see these things become commoditized as well? Um, I think the short answer is yes. However, I, I think what we're going to see over time uh, in the new era, if you will, of smart things or the Internet of Things as it's characterized, mm -hmm. As an end market, it, it won't be nearly as concentrated as the PC market was with Intel or mm -hmm. as the smartphone market is with a company like Qualcomm. It's going to be spread all over the map. Um, it's going to be lots of different end markets. It's going to be automobiles. It's going to be watches. It's going to be wearables on the wrist. Uh, it's going to be a smart light bulb. It's going to be a household appliance, a washer dryer. I mean, it, the list goes on and on. It, and there's, you know, it's not going to be 100 million or 200 million of any of them. It's going to be a whole bunch of 10 million, 50 million unit sort of things. Mm. Um, now, the catch is, is that the price is coming down. Um, you know, you're not going to sell a trillion of anything if it's 100 bucks a throw. It's going to have to come down to 20 cents. Uh, but the point, I think, is that it's going to be highly fragmented. Will it be a commodity? Yes, but it's going to go in so many different directions that the buyer won't really have the leverage on the commodity because the buyer will be only taking a small piece of what's happening. Understood. And Micron's well positioned. Micron is, again, well positioned. They're, again, one of the last three standing players. And uh, finally, after, after several decades, this is paying off for them. Dan, thanks very much for joining me. If you'd like to know more, please look at our website.